Yeah, and I have flushy trail as well. So I'm ready whenever y'all are.
rather take an economic action than military action to avoid more monetary expenses and loss of life. White House spokesman John Carney said, Overall, we are concerned about the situation there, and we urge paramilitary groups to ask the Eastern and Southern parts of Ukraine to lay down their weapons. Economic sanctions on Russia would weaken our economy, and there would be discouraged from any further attempt to annex other regions. President Barack Obama stated, Russia continues on its current course, however, the isolation will deepen, the sanctions will increase, and there will be more consequences for the Russian economy. In conclusion, our first advantage is pl of placing economic sanctions on Russia is the punishment through these sanctions will prevent any future attacks on Ukraine and other nations. The second advantage is that these economic actions are more efficient than military actions. Our two advantages of punishing and stopping the advance of Ukraine are very important. If we are to regain control over Russia, Stop to their legal engagements without using military force, we must enforce economic sanctions. Cressex?
As well as Ukraine needing aid, we have to examine the United States' prior track record with Iraq, Afghanistan, and Somalia. These are prime examples of why not to rush into funding economic sanctions with Ukraine. An article, from, an article from an economist tracking the U.S. economy stated in June 2014 that our intervention with Iraq alone has destroyed the country and left it unmanageable, chaotic, and vulnerable to outside influences. Who's to say that the outcome in Ukraine would be any different? Enforcing these sanctions would negatively, negatively impact Ukraine's economy along with the U.S. Com companies operating in the Russian market. Our second advantage is that the United States public opinion holds that the U.S. government should stay out of Russia's recent annexation of Korea. The present system is uh, a survey was done by CBS in November 2014 say that 61% of the 61 of the rep respondents said that the U.S. does not have responsibility to get involved in the spat between Russia and Ukraine. The public believes that the U.S. is striving for control over the situation. President Obama chimed in between the Russia and Crimea, saying that his administration made a calculation that improving the relationship would be in the U.S. best interest in order to secure Russian help on the issue that were important to the administration in the future. However, to reset these relations, he also claimed in June 2010 from an article from Fox News stated, relations with Russia in an effort to help solve the international problems and improve world economy. But four years later, little, little appears to have improved other than the United States funding Ukraine money that the U.S. does not have, aiding, adding to the budget deficit. Relations and tensions with Russia could come back to seriously hurt the United States. Not getting involved in placing economic sanctions in Ukraine could save the U.S. politically and economically. Business Insider Magazine quoted in November, Russia and the United States far outspace the rest of the world from nuclear deployment with around 9,000 nuclear weapons, respectively. The greatest threat is our stability and not conventional war, but the destabilization of our economy by an enemy such as Russia. According to the U.S. defense, Russia has been thinking long and hard about how to disrupt the U.S. power and the value of the dollar in the global market. In conclusion, our first advantage being that the U.S. simply cannot afford these economic sanctions towards Russia due to the rising national deficit. The second disadvantage being the United States should, should stay out completely of the recent annexation in Korea. Our two disadvantages far outweigh the advantages of the president. If we place economic sanctions within Ukraine, the U.S. could risk relations with Russia and our own economic state. Cross-ex? Tax speech.
considering how economic sanctions will affect the U.S., we argue that there is no inherent need to economically sanction Russia over a long period of time for something to happen swiftly and is happening now. Uh, especially a conflict involving two different countries where the U.S.'s involvement is not explicitly called for. If we're considering the effects between economic sanctions and war, I would agree that economic sanctions are less violent. However, if we look at how it will affect the U.S., I don't see why economic sanctions are expressly called for um, on the basis that we can't afford it. As Elle said, we have um, a lot of debt as it is, 17 trillion, and um, it is enough of a problem keeping our own domestic policy up. I mean, we shut our government down just last semester because we couldn't pass a funding bill. So as far as economic sanctions go, why would maintaining them over a long period of time to have the intended effect be in our favor? It's something that we have to incorporate and keep up over a longer period of time when we already have enough on our plate domestically. Um, also, long-term punishments are, uh, why do you think that long-term punishments are a just reaction? If we want to punish Russia instead of aiding Ukraine or if we want to get in this conflict at all, um, would swift action seem more appropriate in reaction to Russia's swift tendency to act? Um, I understand you argue that Russia hasn't acted violently yet, but the U.S. took a preemptive foreign policy um, as after 9-11, vowing to take whatever action is necessary to prevent any foreseeable violence. So basically, if we're going to act at all, we might as well act. But again, we argue that <clears throat> it would be best for the U.S. to not get involved at all. I'll also add that the argument that economic sanctions are superior um, to immediate action in deterring war is actually false in application. Um, harming trade relations with another country actually gives them less of a reason to keep peace with us and may encourage them to uh, to up the economic sanctions against us and therefore harm our economy. We don't want to start a conflict with Russia without uh, express reason. On that note, how will U.S. involvement against Russia prevent them from uh, harming Ukraine or any other country potentially in their sight? Um, the, it would be a, US, a waste of U.S. money to get uh, involved indirectly um, in the money that we don't have or money that we don't want to be uh, trying to figure out or, or try to afford. I reiterate that if we were to go against U.S. public opinion, as I'll mention, and get involved in this crisis, our actions would come back on us and have us worried about the potential relations that we just harmed with Russia. Um, you mentioned the 91% referendum uh, in Crimea was not recognized by Ukraine because some of the voters were voting twice, some of the voters were not even uh, Ukrainian citizens. However, illegitimate or not, the vote still holds some merit. Um, there, it does speak to some someone's of truth about the public opinion of that area. There's no way that it was manipulated 41% past the median, so I don't think that it should be um, held to the fullest extent of 91%, but you cannot ignore that the people of Crimea do not want to remain part of the Ukrainian government. If the U.S. wanted to actually uh, provide aid in this conflict, as you guys are urging, uh, perhaps we need to consider helping Ukraine maintain its borders and make it a country where people might actually want to stay or stimulating their economy, rather than looking at ways to harm Europe's economy. Um, again, a superior alternate to your argument um, of economic sanctions would be for um, us to aid Ukraine. However, it would be in the U.S.'s best interest to not get involved at all. Uh, in conclusion, we argue that there shouldn't be any economic sanctions, considering that we have enough problems to deal with. As it is, uh, Ukraine and Crimea, Russia and Crimea does not expressly call for U.S. action. As said we get a call from Ukraine asking for help. And um, we still hold largely in favor that public opinion is more advantageous for the U.S. in keeping our own interests at the forefront.
to its full extent to 91 percent, given the evidence that it was conducted legitimately. However, I don't think it should be tossed out completely. The, it still holds some merit of, as to speaking of the opinion of those people. If they're willing to go to the lengths to legally vote for this referendum, to legally call for it, it means that they have an opinion that they want that desperately to be heard. And I think that it should at least be considered when um, considering how everybody's going to react to this. You also mentioned that if the United States were to react at all, that they should act swiftly with short-term effects. So would these short-term effects and actions include military force? I'm not expressly supporting military action, as again, violence is not our, our first uh, priority. But I do think that um, they would be more advantageous than economic sanctions because they um, it would be something that the Russia would have to react to. But I, again, we hope that the U.S. should not be involved at all in no military better relations with Russia, breaking international law is not necessarily our responsibility, but rather responsibility of the United Nations. Bomber cost. 
possibly trying to, uh, I'm not going to say reclaim the Soviet Union, but move that direction so they can have more resources. And so should, should the U.S. just sit by and allow them to do that? And then um, final question. In the quote by Reagan that you said, um, he describes to right wrongs. Um, by enforcing economic sanctions upon Ukraine, that is essentially could ignite war between the U.S. and Russia. Is that correct? And how could you apply that quote directly to the United States? To, to right wrongs? Well, I'm, I'm not avoiding the fact that um, the U.S. has domestic issues. But um, the end of that quote was, if we provide these things for our own people, how can we refuse them to the rest of the world? Um, we feed stalking kids in Africa every day. So why shouldn't we help Ukraine? Defense. I'll restart our case line. The implementation of economic sanctions on Russia is paramount because Russia invaded the Crimean, Crimean, Crimean Peninsula and unjustly took control of the region. Our first advantage, Russia's actions including the invasion of an and annexation of Crimea, the region in the Ukraine have broken international law. This is important, and it seems as though the negative is dodging the fact that what Russia has done broke international law and also broke the constitution of the Ukraine. The report, written by UN Assistant Secretary General for Human Rights, Ivan Simonovic, alleged that the Russian government actively repressed and possibly the possibility of dissent or anti-Russian sentiment and run-up to the referendum. Also, David Andesnik, Andesnik, contributor to Forbes magazine, one reporter from Kiev showed his Russian passport and was handed a ballot and allowed to vote. And allowing Russian citizens to vote in Ukrainian decision is that's a problem related to uh, what we were going on, what's going on in the United States with the little aliens. Uh, our second advantage, the economic sanctions are more efficient than military force in stopping continued Russian action. This is true. Economic sanctions may not be the only political decision to make, but it is the best one because it doesn't mean that the U.S. is going to send troops. It doesn't mean any other nation is going to suffer from it, it's more than likely going to help other nations take control of the market that Russia is currently dominating. And to go back to, uh, I believe it was one of the negative tax speech, uh, and I quote, uh, not quote, paraphrasing here, but they said that hundreds of thousands of people have died in Iraq and Afghani wars. Um, it's like a total of 8,317 deaths, including the UK and all other coalition forces within Iraq and Afghanistan from 2003 to 2012 from iCasualties.org. And that's the Iraqi Coalition Casualty Count. And that's a... So, basically, Economic sanctions are better than, more efficient than military force because, and uh, this is supported by another news contributor, Captain Boyle from NBC. Within Russia, there are major concerns about the impact the sanctions will have on consumers and business confidence, and about money being taken out of the countries and invested elsewhere. This is stating that Russia is worried about the economic sanctions because it will affect their consumers' drive to consume in their economy and their businesses' confidence to provide for those consumers, <coughs> as well as money being taken out of the country and invested elsewhere. So basically, money is being lost if economic sanctions are to be put on Russia. Uh, and then the United States strategy uh, to, to 
to finalize my speech, uh, the United States strategy of economic sanctions on Russia has the advantage of punishing Mr. Putin while minimizing the collateral, collateral damage of the U.S., European, and global economies that could come from a broader economic war. So as long as those economic sanctions are focused between the U.S. and Russia, that's what we want to keep it at. And that's from the editorial board of Washington. One second. Cool. Whenever you're ready. Um, I'll start by restating our case line. Um, the United States House believes that the United States should condemn Russia's actions towards Ukraine by not enforcing. As I'll point out, our first advantage is that we simply cannot afford it. Starting economic sanctions towards Russia could eventually start a war. And with our current financial standings, we simply cannot afford it. The U.S. has a track record with Iraq, Afghanistan, and Somalia, and thus leading us to the fact that we should not rush into economic sanctions, therefore taking our time. If our intervention with, our, or intervention with Iraq has started a war and left our country, Unmanageable. Our second advantage is that I'll say that the United States public opinion holds that the U.S. government should stay out of Russia's recent annexation of Crimea. This is basically saying that this argument and issue against Russia and Ukraine, why should we infringe on that? That is between two countries and the U.S. should not get involved. Obama clearly wants to strengthen our relationship with them and our foreign relations with Russia and Crimea. He believes that if we help them, they will help us. But we should not infringe. By not putting economic sanctions on Ukraine, this could save us not only politically, but economically. And according to Fox News in 2014, Russia's foreign minister warned that this past attack on Russian interests in Ukraine would prompt a firm response and draw comparison. Therefore, the war could break out. The impact is our decision that was made. The U.S. has economic sanctions with China, but the likelihood of China starting a war with the U.S. is slim because of the goods that both of us consume and trade. With Russia, we are lacking free trade. Harming trade with any other country only gives them less trust with us, thus the lead to the start of a war. We can also decrease our dependence on foreign oil. Although the affirmative constructive argument argues that placing sanctions would make the price of oil rise in Europe, the U.S. is capable of shifting some of the petroleum supply from Asia to Europe, which would make a huge market share on that continent while still supplying Asia. Now, in our attack, the main plan was considering how the, it will affect the U.S. She also restated that there is no need to economically sanction Russia over a long period of time for something that is happening and is still currently happening. This involves two separate countries, not even us, so therefore, is our involvement even necessary or legitimate? Talking about how economic sanctions and how the effect on the U.S. Not, is not only harming our safety, but also our finances, and we must be sensitive to our domestic funding operation. Just look at our financial situation now and how that is going, with our current coming out of recession and the government shutting down. Economic sanctions will not only hurt the U.S., but it will also hurt Russia long term requiring a long-term incorporation that we do not need to be tied to Russia or Ukraine. Also, the rigged voting, as the attack stated, there is no way that it could have possibly been 40% past the majority. How is the U.S. going to help two countries who are fighting amongst themselves and America is only asking for trouble by getting involved? Therefore, they should solve it themselves. How is this an investment if we are asking for war by economic sanctions and investing our money in Russia and Ukraine. Next is the F summary. I want to 
to start off by pointing out some of the fallacies that the routine is using. Uh, for L's questioning period, she was talking about the nuclear missile count of the HS and Russia. Uh, and that's just jumping to conclusions. It's kind of slippery slope to say that if we dig it into war with Russia, that it will jump into nuclear war. Um, and it's not that extreme. Also, another logical fallacy that they're using is that they're begging the question of saying that it's between two countries and it doesn't concern us and it should stay between those two countries. Um, that's just restating what you've already said. And as us, uh, the United States, we're on the, U <coughs> the United Nations Security Council, so it, it is our job uh, to ensure the international safety of other countries. Like Jeff stated in the Reagan wing, um, it, uh, it is our job to take out a tyrant uh, and so forth. They also pointed out that if citizens do care this much that they're willing to go to the lengths of illegal voting, that they care about their country so much, um, back to what Zach said uh, about the reporter. There's a Forbes reporter who showed up to Kiev. He showed his Russian pa passport and was handed a ballot and allowed to vote. Uh, and that was said in Forbes magazine on March 18, 2014. If a reporter is able to get off a plane and get handed a ballot where he can vote in the election, uh, that shows how skewed and misrepresented, misrepre misrepresented the votes are. Uh, and back to the original point, it is a, it's not only a conflict between two countries. Russia broke international law, and that's really the issue here. By the words of the UN, it is illegal under international law to annex territory by corro cor corrosion or force. Coercion, sorry. Uh, and with the illegal ballot system that Russia put the Crimean Peninsula through, uh, that is very illegal and is our job as the United States, once again, on the Security Council along with Russia and other countries, uh, to ensure the safety of the world. And then, saying that we cannot afford economic sanctions, uh, economic sanctions is just us freezing the accounts of the Russian billionaires. Uh, the sanctions that we were looking on putting would be the sanctions within Putin's inner circle would be the billionaires uh, of the oil industry and energy industry. And it frees American accounts uh, in the interest of Americans, <clears throat> the interest of American accounts which they have in our country. We're not investing dollars in anything else. We're freezing their accounts and uh, unallowing them to come over here. Um, and that's by the Huffington Post. Uh, that's an article. Then the other team also stated that it's Obama's relations with Russia. Uh, and back again, uh, it's not Obama. It's not the Obama States of America. It's the United States of America. It's not Obama on the Security Council. It's our country on the Security Council. So it's not President Obama's responsibility to ensure international safety. It's us as part of the Security Council in the United Nations to ensure that they broke international law and they deserve to be punished for their actions. Uh, by taking over Crimea uh, forcibly or by through the misrepresented votes of the Ukrainian people, it is a direct direct reflection that they did break international law and that they do need to be punished uh, by us and the other European powers that are also <coughs> affected by the situation. Thank you. 
Russia would be an effective tool because Russia is breaking international law. If Russia is indeed breaking international law, why are other surrounding countries not involved along with the United States to aid Ukraine? Why must the United States intervene when Russia has not established a war on Ukraine? Much less the United States. Yes, the United States tends to intervene in world politics, but let's not forget that Russia has not put an attack on the United States. If Russia were to do so, then the United States would respond, as we have seen from previous historical events. But because the issue is with the country of Ukraine, Ukraine should try to put a stop to Russia before asking the United States to intervene. They stated that economic sanctions against Russia are the only way to peacefully stop Russia from repeating their illegal actions. However, peace would only be in the beginning and would last a short amount of time. In the future, these sanctions would cause harm to the United States and the rest of the world. By not allowing trade, the United States would lose money, and by establishing these sanctions, businesses not just in Russia, but the rest of the world, would face an economic decline, targeting those who do business with Russia first, and then it would cause a domino effect on the rest of the world. They stated that the impact of economic sanctions on Russia would weaken, their econo would weaken Russia's economic, and then Russia would be discouraged to continue their advancement of control over Kenya. That would not be that would not be the, the cause, considering, according to the New York Times, Ukraine owes Russia more than 16 billion in unpaid gas bills and other debts, meaning Russia holds substantial sway over Ukraine's financial uh, future, financial future in which the United States will have to fund. If we proceed with implementing economic sanctions against Russia, these sanctions would mean nothing to Russia and would end up benefiting their country instead of hurting them in the future. The U.S. would then end up having more debt and just 17 trillion we already owe, which is a lot. While Ukraine would be paying off debt they owe to Russia, causing economic sanctions to put on Russia to be a failure. Earlier you stated that a certain percentage of Americans could not live in Ukraine on the map. And you asked how we could better locate, allocate our money um, better than helping a country in need. Instead, with that money we could educate these people to where they could they would be able to locate that country on the map. However, if Americans cannot locate these countries on that, why are we helping them in the first place? The United States should not face economic sanctions on Russia.